As the name suggests, Beer and Bread has two players making the best beer and the best bread. In this video, we're going to give you our thoughts on the game here on Legendary Tactics. So we've just finished our first playthrough of Beer and Bread. Yes, and uh, I, the, for me, I think this is game, I don't know, seven or seven, eight, maybe. Yeah, eight maybe. I've played you played, you played a few with your family. <laughs> yeah. We played it. We played a bunch before we even sat down tonight. So we've we've had a number of games of this. Yeah. And uh, first impressions, Nato. What do you think? What do you think of beer and I bread? Think, I think um, I really like. I'll tell you what I like first, and then a couple things that I'm I'm not as much of a fan of. So the things that I like first, I think this is actually a really unique game. It's a resource management game, but I cannot think of another game to really compare it to. We were um, actually struggling for that, weren't we? Yeah, it was. It's very hard to think of something that really is similar. Um, and if the viewers have an idea of a game that they think kind of connects, please let us know below. We'd love to hear. Yeah, absolutely. I, and it's it's true that I I don't necessarily play a ton of these type of games, uh, but uh, for me, it's it stood out as being pretty unique. It's it's resource management. It's a little bit of yes. uh, hand management. Um, yep. And there's some other oh, for sure. little bits involved, but um, but overall the game I think for what it uh, for what it is it's a fun little game, um, and I think there's enough strategy there. It it, it lasts about as long as it should. Um, it doesn't but, overstay its welcome. Yeah, about 45 minutes, uh, which is uh, a bit longer than it, I would have expected. Um, but um, but no, I, I think it it definitely does what it's. Uh, supposed to do and and uh so forth so i like i like i think this game would really shine in cardboard yes i find digitally it's it's a little clunky playing it digitally it's uh you know it's what we have to what we've got was our option for tonight but i find that um i think playing it cardboard would really really bring it to life yes well, you bought it for me, so we can... Yes, we're going to have to sit down <laughs> at the table with that, too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, what do you like best about it? I really love the ketchup mechanic in it, the beer and the bread ketchup bit there. Yes. I think that is so clever that it's your lower standing uh, lowest score. section Yes, is, is what your score is. So you, you are completely obligated to keep those two rivals as close as possible. Yes, yeah. Uh, and that's I just think that's, that is so so creative That's yeah great. yeah and i mean there are other games like that i've 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 come across where you you take the lower of the of the two scores sometimes that's uh, uh i i think i'm thinking of uh uh reiner knitzia's um oh my gosh what's the game in in the desert there uh, not Rob, but the other one um, that he did, uh, Tigris and Euphrates. That's it. Oh, right. Okay. That one had a similar thing where it, you count your lowest score as your score. Um, right. So I have right. seen it before, but it's. I think it's really in this in this game. I think it's uh, really good. Um, yeah. Now oh, I, I think I would, they do that very well. Yeah, and I would say this is a very generous resource management game. It's very rare that I found, like we ran out of barley in our game, but that's kind of rare. You don't necessarily yes. run, I never feel like I run low on resources per se. I, I may not have the exact mix I want in my storage, but I feel and it's And that's generous. what brings me to the next, to, to probably my biggest complaint about this game is that that feeling of you, you've completely mismanaged your resources that you currently have. Yes. And you kind of can get stuck. And I've seen it with you. Yep. And I, it happened with me in the in our playthrough game where I just felt very, very stuck. And yes. And it was kind of like a, a broken record. And I think that's maybe my biggest qualm with it. But I think in the in, end for that, I have to look in the mirror and just say I had to play better. Well, yes, perhaps that can be mitigated by play. I mean, there is luck sometimes. Like sometimes you fill your storage and you, you drop your hand for the next round and... There are some, you know, some, let's say we're in a, in a, in a, uh, not a, you know, a, a dry season yes, and yes. you have the three cards that can be swapped out. Uh, but let's say none of them actually work for you and you've got, you're stuck with the hand you have to play. And yes. sometimes you're stuck with the resources that you have and you don't have the ones that you need. And yeah, absolutely. You can kind of, I get think, stuck. I think that the potential for that in that kind of round and, and a hand is, is possible. And it's a little tricky to overcome it. I, I tried the strategy there of just trying to dump cards into my uh, event 
deck. Yes, or, you they're know, like onto the yeah, onto the board. Yeah, onto, onto cards that were you know recurring events. Um, but uh, it just became overwhelming because I I just couldn't find a good synergy. Yes. So yeah, and when I mean when you have a nice synergy and you're able to use up all your ingredients perfectly and and everything and it does feel great. But I do think it it is a little bit luck based in that sense. You know, you have to ha- happen to have the cards in hand or or you you know you happen to have them pop up in the in the dry season row here and they're useful um you know the, so yeah i think well and actually speaking of of, of very creative ideas because i think another way they mitigated that luck idea is that the the switching of the hands yes in the in the good season so that's another way more cards are at your disposal yes so there's less of a chance of that happening and I, I think that's a really, really cool mechanic as well. And I, I should have mentioned that earlier, but uh, I love that you flip flip hands back and forth. Yeah. The other thing I think that maybe you, you weren't paying attention to perhaps is that when you play cards down for, for harvesting in the fruitful fruitful season, these come back into your hand for the the dry season. Right. Yes. And so you, you can kind of pick your resources. You know you're going to get these cards back uh, in hand. Uh, at some point so or like right. at, so you can the, almost you yeah. can almost like build your resources to the the following round yes so you yes i think that's maybe part of the overall strategy oh yeah i yeah. would imagine so yeah, yeah. And, and i mean just becoming more familiar with the game i think that's there's there's a good learning potential in this game too as well like just for for things that you could pick up on develop and, and yes. grow on yeah, and there's cert- yeah, certain card abilities and how things synergize and so forth. Um, now, I will say uh, for me, the one thing that I don't really like about it is there is a little bit of vagueness in the rules. Um, and it can be uh, kind of innocuous and there, you know, in the sense that, like, for example, um, <clears throat> if you look at this card, which I, I had, very simple. It looks simple on the surface. Whenever you collect any hops during one of your harvest or store actions, collect one additional hops token. Okay. My my question is, does that hops token come from the field or does it come from the public s- oh, and storage? Oh, that, that matters rather significantly. And it can matter. And I'm and on one hand, like the rules, I, I, if I recall, I read them. I know that I was checking for that rule and I wasn't able to find it. So it may be there and I just missed it. But... But okay. to me, that matters a lot because this card almost becomes more powerful if you're taking the additional one off the field because then you can really deprive uh, your opponent of those of those resources. Or imagine you're able to choose, right? So that if, if there's none on the field, you actually get yeah. some from the from the store. Yeah, and there, there's a, a few rules like that where it's like 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 we we ran well, into well, you and I ran game. into a problem, right? Yeah. Yes, um, which was basically when my tableau was full. Uh, or sorry, my, my, my stores were full. Could I, in playing a new resource card, could I switch them out? Yes. For what I wanted, right? Or when you offer me resources and my storage is full, can I just swap out the ones, you know, can I discard the ones out of my storage that I want to discard and then put in the ones that I want? And it's one of those things where it's kind of like the air bud rule. There's no rule against doing that as far as I can tell. So mm-hmm. yeah, I guess you can. Um, but it would have been so nice maybe to it's have a, that. It could be it, it could be a house rule idea too, where you just house rule that one. Or yeah, maybe maybe they, there's been an errata put out on it. So yeah, I should really check uh, uh, Board Game Geek about that because. Uh, but it is one of those things that I would imagine would have come up in play testing, and uh, people would oh, have yeah, asked. Oh yeah, definitely. So um, anyway, but it, and sometimes that's that's the case when you have a uh, a simpler game. Sometimes the where where the rules are not that long, and you almost wish they were a little bit longer. Like I ran into that with Tapestry uh, from okay. Stonemeyer Games, where the, there's yes. one page of rules or whatever, uh, but there's all this stuff kind of left kind of open because <laughs> the rules weren't long enough to clarify to de- edge detail cases. Detail out what you need to know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and sometimes you have edge cases that come up and it's always good if if that's something that happened during play testing, then it would be good to you know <laughs> to know that and uh and you know have a an official uh rule. So um but other than that, what are your impressions overall? So I, I was just thinking on the two seasons. I love the two season idea, mm-hmm. uh, and and how they differ. So I love yep. that you have the the winter bit where you're drawing from the same, and then you have the summer where you flip hands. Yeah, I love the I love the end game part. 
Uh, I love the, uh, the that catch-up bit, and I overall, I love that it's a simple game that has layers of complexity to it. Yes, yes. So this is, how, overall, how it's a win for you? Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. and this is a win for me as well. Uh, I really, I, Again, I think it's a great... Uh, light resource management game where uh, you're, you know, there's not really um, a lot of, um, you know, take that kind of mechanics where you're, you're not really, uh, occasionally you leave your opponent short of a resource or, or whatever, but uh, it's a very gentle game in that sense. It's very generous. You're not, it, the cutthroat aspect doesn't really yes happen too much i would say but yes and so you know this is a game i can play with my wife it doesn't feel too competitive you know it doesn't feel like yes it's competitive but it's it's very you know you're kind of doing your own thing and uh there's very mild interactions so you can really just build up your own uh you know your own engine your own engine and and focus on that um and so it's a nice light game um and i think it's a great uh, kind of introductory uh, game for people um, just complex enough that it's a challenge yeah. for more seasoned gaming uh, gamers but simple enough that it's going to hit the table fairly easily you're going to get uh, a lot of people to try it in some ways it's a really great gateway game yeah yeah i think i no, agree yeah i yeah. agree so and uh and uh, just one last note uh just with regard to the uh, the aesthetics the i think the art is really great and when you play with the the wooden bits uh i think it has a nice feel to it the cards are are nice once you uh once you get the the icons and everything you figure out what they're doing um you know it's a very pretty game for uh you know such a small box <laughs> that's awesome yeah, yeah that's great so uh, a small box with a mighty punch yes there you go <laughs> that's great <laughs> well we hope you've enjoyed this uh, little uh review here of beer and bread and don't forget to like subscribe and if you get a chance uh join as a member we'd love to have you on this has been legendary tactics 